Hello, I would like to welcome you to the first lecture of ELEC ENG 2 CI5. Um, in this lecture, we'll be discussing the concept of current uh, voltage and uh, the sources that create currents and voltages in electric circuits. Um, this, chap this lecture will cover chapter 1, pages 1 to 9. Uh, so, um, we'll, uh, we'll, again, as I said, we'll try to go over the ba some basic concepts and then uh, starting from the next uh, Next two lectures, we'll start talk about actual circuits. We'll start by giving some fundamental definition of units. You should uh, fully understand that uh, milli is 10 to the minus 3, okay? Uh, micro is 10 to the minus 6. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. Pico is 10 to the minus 12. Kilo is 10 to the power 3. Mega is 10 to the power 6. Giga is 10 to the power 9, and so on. Uh, resistor values are usually from few ohms uh, to few mega ohms. Capacitor values are start from uh, few bico farads up to uh, thousands of um, of microfarads. So from bico, few bico, to thousands of microfarads. One farad is a huge capacitance. Um, practical values for inductors are usually from um, I would say around the milli usually, milli Henry. This is the, the normal values for an inductance. And here I'm showing some, sub, some values, and here frequency is in uh, 10 gigahertz. This is in the um, microwave frequency range. The first thing when we talk about current and voltage is to understand what is meant by current. And in order to understand this, we have to go back to the uh, atom model, the Bohr's atom, atom model. And this model, we have uh, valence electrons in the outermost shell. We have uh, protons and neutrons in the, in the nucleus. And uh, depending on how strongly attached these valence electrons to the nucleus, um, the, the electrons in the outermost shell can move and can conduct current. If the, of course, one of the electrons leave this atom is going to leave behind a positive ion, and maybe another electron will come and fill that, that uh, gap that was created, or that hole that was created. Um, so, these valence electrons in the outermost shell determine whether the material is a good conductor, is, a, is an insulator, or is a, a semiconductor. So, if, the, if these electrons are tightly connected to the, to the nucleus, they cannot move, then there are no electrons available for conduction, and this material will behave as an insulator. When you apply a voltage to it, there will be very little, very little current going through. If these valence electrons can move freely, they are loosely connected to the nucleus, then when you apply a voltage, these electrons start to move out. So there, there, is, there is a whole variation of, of values for this thing. Now, the number that determines the ability to conduct current is called the conductivity and is given the symbol sigma. Okay, so this is called the material conductivity and it is a property of matter. Okay, so every material uh, in the world around us, even including our human tissues, they, had, has, they have their own conductivity. A very high conductivity indicates it's a good conductor, El electrons are loosely connected, they can move. Uh, very low conductivity means it's an insulator, electrons cannot move. For good conductors, the conductivity can be as high as 10 to the power 8. Uh, for insulators, it can be as, as low as 10 to the minus 16. So uh, conductivity is a, is a positive number, and it ranges from a very, very small value to a huge number for conductors. Okay, so it's very important to understand that the conductivity describes the ability of the electrons to conduct current, how, 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 how connected they are to the nucleus. High conductivity means the, the, the valence electrons in the outermost shell are loosely connected to the nucleus and they can break free and they can conduct current. Now we move to answer the question, what moves electrons? Why, why would, would an electron move? Well, this takes us back to one of the fundamental laws of electrical or electro electromagnetics called Coulomb's law. And you have heard about it probably in physics courses. If you have two charges with a singularity, the, the, uh, the rebel against one another, they try to move away from one another. If they have two charges with opposite, opposite polarity, they attract one another. 
So if we try just to take a look on the to the charges on the right hand side, we can say there is a force trying to move the positive charge out here in this case, and there is a force that's trying to move the negative charge to the towards the other one. This force is really the electric field. So when we when we talk about an electric field, uh, we really express the existence of an electric force, a force that is resulting from other charges somewhere, and they are trying to push the existing charges that we have right now. So if you take a look only at the charges at the right and ignoring the charges on the left, we can simply see the charges on the right are affected by an electric field. In the first case, this electric field is trying to, to push the positive charge to the right. In the second case, this electric field is trying to push the negative charge to the left. Okay, so whenever we see an electric field, we mean electric force. And the electric force means there are charges that cause that force. Uh, so this is very important to understand this, okay? And um, the, uh, this, this force is really what creates current. You have very strong electric field or, or electric field of some value, and then it starts to move charges in its directions or against its direction, as I will explain in a second. Okay, so it's very important to understand that an electric field, when you, write, when you talk about an electric field, we usually give it the symbol E. It actually represents electric force, F. Okay, and both this electric force is what really gives rise to the current I. Because this force is what, is what makes the electrons drift in its directions. Or the charges move uh, either in its direction or against its direction, as I will show you in a second. Okay, we have here two situations. We have two different types of materials. Uh, let's maybe take a look at, at this scenario here. Here we have lots of electrons available for conduction in this material. We have here fewer electrons available for conduction in this material. This is a good conductor with high sigma, with high conductivity. This is a, maybe an insulator or not a good conductor. Okay. In both cases, the current's flowing in the in the in the shown direction here. So this is the direction of the current. So I can simply say that this is I, okay. And the electric field it points in the same direction of the current. So this is the same direction of the electric field here. Okay. Someone will tell me, okay, but but why why um, the uh, the charge have here negative charges? They are not really positive charges. Negative charges move again is the direction of the electric field. So what is going to happen? All these charges, they do flow in this direction. Opposite to the direction of the electric field. They are all electrons. They move in this direction. Okay? So, and why they move in this direction? Because somewhere there are some positive charges that are creating this field. And these positive charges are attracting these electrons. Okay? So it's very important to realize this. So we have here a situation where conduction is carried out through electrons, and the electrons carry negative charge. And the value of this charge, if you have never heard about this number, is a very famous number you should remember, is minus 1.6, 10 to the minus 19 column. It's a very tiny charge. So one column is really a huge charge. So in the first figure, conduction is done through electrons. Electrons move again in the direction of the electric field. But the direction of the current is opposite to the direction of flow of the electrons. And it is the direction of the current is the same as the direction of the electric field. Okay? And as I said, electric field means there are charges somewhere, they are not shown, that created that electric field. Here we have plenty of charges available for conduction. Here we, here we have fewer one. Here the current will be strong. Here the current will be weak for the same electric field. And the other figure, the conduction is done in a different mechanism. This is the, the, the second line. This is the direction of the current flow. So this is I here and this I here. Here we have plenty of positive charges available for conduction. These can be positive ions or they can be holes. Uh, later in your electronic courses, you will learn that there is an equivalent uh, current mechanism called uh, um, uh, it's, it's actually caused by the flow of equivalent charges, positive charges called holes. You will learn this in your electronic courses. So uh, here we have many of these positive charges available for conduction. Here we have many of these negative charges. 
The electric field, as I explained earlier, always points in the same direction as the current, or the current points in the same direction as the electric field, okay? And here in this case, the positive charges move in the direction of the electric field. Okay, so you'll move this way. Of course, why do you move this way? Because this electric field was caused by some positive charges somewhere else, and the positive charges we have inside our material are trying to rebel, go out, to go away from this from these positive charges. Here, we in the first scenario, we have plenty of positive charges, so this means we have high conductivity, we get strong current. Here we have few of these positive charges, we have lower conductivity, we have weaker current. Okay, so remember the current, uh, the, the negative charges flow opposite to the electric field, as shown here, and positive charges flow in the same direction of the electric field. The direction of current flow is the direction of the flow of positive charges and is opposite direction of the flow of negative charges. This is a very fundamental concept that you will be using over and over again. Now, uh, there, is, there is one equation that we use to characterize uh, the current flow. If we take a cross-section here in this cylinder, assume this is a cylinder and we take a cross-section here. Okay, so you get a circle. If I draw this circle outside, okay, I will see that uh, charges are moving out or in from that surface, okay? The density of these charges defines something called current density J. So the current density J is, if you check the laws of physics, actually com coming from Maxwell's equation, is equal to sigma E. And this, this J is in ampere per meter squared. It's current density. It, it describes how many, uh, uh, what is the charge flowing out from a unit area. Remember, from a unit area. So if I take a unit area here, the charge is flowing out from a unit area uh, per second. Okay. So this is why it's per meter squared. If you want to get the total electric field, what you have to do, you have to multiply the current density by the area. And here, of course, we assume that we have uniform current density. Current density is the same everywhere in the cross section. Okay, so this is, these are fundamental laws. Uh, they all originate from Maxwell's equations, but we're not going to discuss this right now. So just remember, the relationship that gives you the current from the electric field is J equal to sigma E, and J is simply the current density. It is it's the, the charge flowing per unit area. If you want to get the current flowing through a specific area A, A here is the area, A, this A here is the area, do you have to multiply the current density, which is an ampere per meter squared. You multiply it by an area in meter squared, you get ampere, current in ampere. Okay, let's have an example. We have here a cylinder uh, shape. This can be actually a resistor. Uh, we, there is an electric field inside it. This electric field is one microvolt per meter. This is this is these are the units of electric field, volt per meter. One microvolt per meter is ten to the minus six volt per meter. We want to find the current I flowing here in this in this conductor. So this is E, and this will be the direction of I. So the current is flowing inside the cylinder. If the conductivity is sixty three mega siemens per meter, the unit of conductivity is siemens per meter. And this is a huge conductivity because this is silver, and silver is a good conductor. It has a huge number of volumetric electrons available for conduction. And uh, the radius here are the radius of, of this cylinder is 0.002. And here, for simplicity, you assume that uh, the current is flowing uniformly in the cross section. So uh, if you want to get the total current from the current density, you multiply by the area. And want to repeat if the sigma is equal to 2.17. Of course, if I know E and I know sigma, I can get J, the current density. How, how, what is the charge flowing uh, per second from a unit area in the cross-section? And if I have J, I can get I, because I simply multiply J by the area, which is pi R squared. We're going to repeat this one again for this material, 2.17, which is very low. It's relatively low conductivity, and we'll try to take a look at the current. So in the first case, we say that the current density, if you take a cross-section here, the density of the current in the cross-section, so if you take a cross-section here, okay, the amount of charge flowing per second per unit area is equal to sigma 1e. Sigma 1 is given already. It's 63 mega, uh, and this is the uh, electric field, 1 microvolt per meter. You get 63 ampere per meter squared. 
but if you want to get the total current this is just density current density if you want to get the actual current flowing in this cross section you multiply the current density which is an ampere per meter squared you multiply by the area which is in meter squared so this is by r squared so this is the current density this is the area you get that the current total current flowing is 395.6 microampere if you repeat these same steps for the other material if, if, if the cylinder here is made of a different material with a much lower conductivity of 2.17 you repeat the same steps you get much lower uh, current density and you get much lower current the current here is in picoampere so this is microampere 10 to the minus 6 this is 10 to the minus 12 so this is the second the first case is a good conductor the second case is an insulator So another way of writing the relationship between the current and the charge is that the current is the rate of change of the charge. The charge is flowing through the cross section. We'd like to see how much charge is flowing through the cross section in a specific time. We divide the delta Q over delta T if the time is small enough and this will give us the current. And here we have a case, a very simple example, when you have 0.002 columns flowing through a cross section, a certain cross section. I don't need, need to know the cross section here, but the time is one millisecond. So they took one millisecond to flow through the cross section. Then I can simply say that I is dQ by dt, delta Q by delta T approximately. This is 0.2 column divided by the, by the uh, time, which is one to the minus three. You end up by 20 ampere. So the current is really the rate of change of the charge. And uh, we can do calculate it in any cross section of a conductor by by estimating how much how much charge is flowing per second. Uh, we can do it, of course, if you have the expression analytically, or it can be done numerically, as shown here. We will be handling many circuits that will have branches. In every branch, we have to say this is the reference direction of the current. We assume that the current is flowing in this direction. If the value is positive, if the value of the current is positive in our solution, this means that the current indeed flows in this direction. So this means that most of the charges flow in this direction. If, the, if we do the calculations and the current is negative, as shown here, so this means that the current actually does not flow from here to here. Rather, it's flowing in the opposite direction. Okay? So for every branch, we'll, we will assume a reference say this is our assumption of the current and we do our analysis if the if the number we get in the analysis is a positive number for the current this means that indeed current is flowing in the reference direction if the value we get from the analysis is negative this means the current actually actually flows in the opposite direction this becomes clearer when we start to analyze circuits with many branches and many resistances and so on but just to keep in mind this concept of a current reference what, is mean, what, is, what does it mean to have a negative current? Negative current means that the current is actually flowing opposite to the assumed reference direction. And here we have an example. Um, this current is 2 ampere, means it's flowing indeed in this direction. This current is 3 amperes, indeed in this direction. This current is minus 2 ampere. So this is its reference, but actually the current is 2 ampere flowing out from node B. Okay, this current I, I, uh, it's called here ICB is equal to 4 ampere, means it's, and I assume the reference to be in this direction, and this positive. So we have 4 ampere indeed flowing in this direction. And later you will know when we study Kirchhoff current law that the sum of all currents flowing into the node is equal to the currents flowing out from the node. Here we have 1, 2, 3 currents flowing in and they have two currents flowing out, okay? And remember, I assume this one to be flowing in, but I gave it a negative value because all I care about is read the reference direction. Currents can be DC currents or AC currents. They can be constant with time, as shown here, or they can be oscillating with time. It's, it all really depends on the electric field that moves the charges. So if, if I draw a cylinder here, okay, and uh, the electric field is all that is constant and it's pointing in the same direction that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a DC current. But if the electric field, it changes direction sinusoidally with time, so at one another instant time is going this way, 
then the current will reverse its direction as well. So just keep in mind what the, what the alternating current means. It simply means that the electric field that causes the charges to move is changing direction periodically as well. And this moves, causes the charges to start moving in the opposite direction. Now we move to discuss the concept of voltage. What's a voltage? And before I move, I talk about this, I'll first give an example from the physical world around us. If you have a car and this car is going uphill against gravity, this car is actually gaining energy. And this is why when it goes down the ramp, you will see it will go faster without you having to press any, any gas because it's losing the energy that, that's already acquired. So what I want to get out from this slide is, is, is as follows. If you move outside the field, if you move opposite to the field, if you move opposite, this is the gravity, so this is a component of the gravity in the direction of the car. So the car is moving opposite to the direction of the field, it's accumulating energy. But here it's moving, this is the gravity, this is a component of the gravity in the direction of the car, the car is actually moving in the, in the in a direction uh, that in direction uh, very close to that of the field and the result its energy is decreasing okay so this concept is the same one that we have in electrons when our or with the charges when it charges move positive charges i'm going to here talk mainly about positive charges because usually our discussion is usually about positive charges and the electrons behave in the opposite way if an electron if a positive charge moves in the direction of the electric fields actually losing energy but it moves opposite to the electric fields it's actually gaining energy let's take a look at this in the next slide okay so here i have um electric field it's flowing in this direction it's pointing in this direction so this means it's trying to move positive charges in this direction this what this what these lines are saying that there, there is force and this force trying to move positive charge in this direction okay because the electric fields are pointing this way, point V, or this line here, has a higher voltage than this line. Electric field lines are like water. The fl water flows from high elevation to low elevation. Electric field lines flow from high voltage to low voltage. Okay? So here you have a charge. This charge, the electric field is trying to move it from left to right. It will start to move from left to right on its own. Then it's losing energy. But if there is an external force that will try to push it against the electric field, it's trying to move it from right to left, this means that this charge is accumulating energy. Okay? So the voltage difference between two points is related to the work used to move the charge between the two points. So um, by definition, we can simply say that the voltage difference is the work done moving a unit of charge, so a charge of one column, between two points. So if I move one, one a charge of one column from here to here, and I have to, the external force have to put a work, say, of five joules. Then five joules divided by one column, this means that point, that V1 is higher than V2 by five volts. Okay? So it's very important to understand that the voltage difference, voltage difference means there is an electric field. And Electric field means that if you want to move a positive charge against the electric field, some work ha has, has to be done. And this, and this work, if you divide it by the charge, will give you the voltage difference. And those who study electromagnetics will get into, in detail, into more details about we do this calculation. But what I want you to remember right now, when we say a voltage difference between two points, we mean there is an electric field existing between these two points is trying to move the positive charges from the higher voltage to the lower voltage but if there is an external force that will take this positive charge and move it against the electric field this external force will have to put some work the work done per per unit charge is equal to the uh, the voltage difference between the two points um, the unit of current as we explained is called the ampere Ampere means you, uh, but, uh, well, current is equal to delta Q over delta T. So 1 ampere means you have a charge of 1 column flowing out from the cross section in 1 second. Here in the voltage unit, something similar is happening. A voltage difference of 1 volts means that you have to put a, four, a work of 1 joule to move a charge of 1 column between these two points. 
okay? So here we have these two points here, point B and point A. If B has a higher potential than A, then moving this one column from point A to point B will require some work to be done. This work is equal to the voltage difference between B and A. So remember, this is unit charge. In order to move it in this direction, some external force have to put work, okay? Because you are moving it against the electric field. The electric field is pointing this way. And you are trying to move it against the electric field. So you have to put some work. This work to move this unit charge is simply the voltage difference between the two points. Voltages also have polarity. So here, uh, usually the voltage, uh, we say that uh, the voltage difference between point A and point B say point A here and point B here is equal to 2 volts. What this, this means, if you, if you connected a resistance between these two points, a current will start to flow from the high voltage to the low voltage. So positive charges will start to flow from here to here, or negative charges will start to flow from B to A. Okay? Remember the current is direction of flow of positive charges. It is the opposite to the direction of flow of negative charges. But in some circuits, when we analyze the circuit, we assumed in the beginning, we assume this reference, that this point is higher than this one. But the answer we get is minus 5 volts. What does this mean? This means that point B actually has a higher potential than A. So when you get a positive answer in your solution, means that your reference direction, positive, negative, is correct. This means that point A has a higher potential than B. But if you get a negative answer, like this one here, this means that point A is lower in potential than B, or that B is actually higher than A. So if you connect a battery between these two here, and the answer is negative, this means the current will flow in this direction. Will flow from the higher potential to the lower potential. Remember, positive charges move from higher on their own, from higher potential to positive potential, because the electric field, electric field lines are, uh, or the electric field apply force, that points from the higher potential to the lower potential, from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. We use the word potential and voltage uh, in a, to mean the same thing here in this course. Here, these are some, uh, some other um, expression here for the, uh, the way we, we note voltages. We can write this voltage as VAB. VAB means the voltage of A relative to the voltage of B. Um, so, uh, so here, this is th this one here refers the voltage of this one relative to this one. So, if you do your calculations and you get an answer of two, this means indeed that this point has a higher point A has a higher potential than B. So, if you connect a resistance between them and we agreed, charges positive charges move from higher to lower potential, so the current will flow this way. Okay, but if you do your calculations and you end up with a negative say VEB is equal to minus 5 volts, and this was your polarity, this means that point B is actually has a higher potential than A by 5 volts. So current, if you close the circuit, will flow from B to A. Okay, v, VEB is the opposite of VBA. VEB is the voltage of A relative to B. Okay, so you assume, make an assumption, if this is a positive number, VEB is positive, that A is higher than B. But VBA is the negative of VAB. It is VB relative to VA. And I should stress here that there is nothing called the absolute voltage. There is only relative voltage because voltage is related to work. And work means you have to move from one point to the other. So voltage is always, when we talk about voltage, we mean actually the voltage difference between two points. We mean the work you, uh, done to move one unit charge of one column from the first point to the second point, okay? This, become, well, this will become clear when we start to solve circuits, but what I want you to remember is that we assume a certain polarity for the voltage usually between any two points. If the answer we get is positive, then this is great. This means that this point is indeed has a higher potential this one, so if you close the circuit current will flow from A to B. If you get a negative answer, this means that actually B is higher than A, and the current will flow in the opposite direction. Okay, here we have a very simple example. We say that 136 joules were expended to move 8.5 times the power 18 electrons between two points in electric field. What is the potential difference? So you know the work done, and you know the charge. The charge is not given in column here. 
is given in electrons, but we know what is the charge of one electron. It's minus 1.16 to the minus 19. Okay, so we can calculate the total charge. We know the work done. Divide the work by the charge, and this will give you the voltage because the voltage, by definition, is the is the work done to move a unit charge. Okay, so let's see how this is solved. So we first calculated the total charge as shown here, multiplied the number of electrons by the charge of one electron. We got that the total charge that moved is negative, of course, because there are electrons, minus 1.36 coulomb. An electron has a negative charge. A proton has a positive charge. The voltage difference is the work divided by the charge. 136 joules divided by minus 1.36 uh, column you end up by minus 100 volts so this means that the voltage this is v1 and this is higher than v2 v1 is higher in potential than v2 by 100 volts okay so the electric field lines are actually moving if i want to show you the electric field lines they are going to be moving this way this is the electric field lines okay and the electrons are being or this cloud of electrons are moving in the opposite direction because electrons get pushed the opposite to the uh, electric field, okay? Now, the last thing is, what creates the electric field? We agree that electric field is created by charges, but where do, they, where do these charges come from? They come from batteries. They come from sources. So here, the first type of source we're going to consider is called the independent sources. This is called a voltage source. This one supplies some voltage between its terminals. If it's DC, it's going to be constant. So point A will always have higher potential than point B. It can be 5 volts, 12 volts. Uh, there is another type of source called current source. This one supplies constant current. So let me show you the difference between these two here. Uh, a voltage source also can be drawn this way. We can draw it in this way or in the way shown here. So if you connect this one to a resistance R, you close the circuit. A current will start to flow. But the voltage between these two terminals will, will be fixed, say, at 12 volts. But the current drawn from the source will depend on the value of the resistance. So the circuit is what determines the current being drawn. But for the current source, it's a little bit different. If you connect a current source, like this one here, to a resistor R, okay, the current flowing in the circuit will be equal to I. But the voltage across the, the, the current source will be determined by the circuit. Okay, so it's very important to understand that the voltage source gives constant voltage. But the current drawn from it will be determined by the circuit. The current source gives constant current. 5 ampere, 3 ampere, 2 ampere. But the voltage across it will be determined by what our, the other components that are going to connect to it. Okay? Uh, voltage sources, we have them, uh, they are the batteries we have in our cars, the batteries we use in our cell phones, they supply constant voltage. Current sources are a very, are very you can construct current sources, uh, but they have to be, you have to use uh, electronics, uh, such as transistors and uh, op amps, to create a circuit that gives a constant current regardless of what load you connect to it. But you will learn this in your electronic courses. For now, we just include them in our calculations and uh, fully understand how they work. Later in the next lecture, we are going to be talking about dependent sources. But these ones, these sources here, do not depend on the voltage or the current anywhere else.